Hi, I'm Omar Salguero from the Cisco TAC XR team, and today I want to walk you through the process on how to boot up your iOS XR router using IPXE. IPXE is a pre-boot execution environment that is included in the network card of the management interfaces and works at the system firmware level of the router. IPXE is used to re-image a system and boot the router in case of a boot failure or in the absence of a valid bootable partition. IPXE boot can be performed on the following scenarios. Migration from 32-bit to 64-bit using migration script, password recovery, and boot up failure with 64-bit image. Here's what you need before we start. An iOS XR router running iOS XR 64-bit, an FTP or TFTP server reachable from your management interface, an iOS XR 64-bit image stored on your FTP or TFTP server, a backup from your configuration and all important data from the router. In this video, we'll do a downgrade from version 7.9.21 to version 7.5.2 using IPXC boot. As you can see, we are on version 7.9.21. Now, start by logging into the system admin console using the admin command and type hardware module location all reload to reload the router. If you don't have access to a CLI, power cycle the router. Once the following prompt shows up, press Ctrl C to abort the booting process. Then choose option 4 for IPXE boot. If your router has dual RSPs, make sure to extract the standby card or stop the booting process as well. Press Ctrl V to enter the IPXE command line. On this screen, you will have to manually configure some fields to establish a connection towards the FTP TFTP server. Use the command set Cisco slash Cisco IPv4 address string to configure an IP address of your management interface. Then type set Cisco slash Cisco netmask address string to configure the subnet of your IP address. Now type set cisco slash cisco gateway address string to configure your default gateway address. Finally, type set cisco slash cisco server URL string to configure the location of the image that you want to install. The variables net0 and net1 represent the management port 0 and port 1, respectively. Close both ports and open the one that you're connected to. At this point, you should be able to ping your FTP or TFTP server. Finally, boot the image from the FTP or TFTP location. Type boot. Then, the type of transfer, FTP or TFTP. The IP of your server. And lastly, the path to the mini ISO file. If everything is correct, the download of the new image will start. Once the download is complete, the new image will be installed. Once the installation is complete, the router will boot up and ask you for your new credentials. As you can see, we successfully installed iOS XR version 7.5.2. Finally, if you have dual RSPs, insert the standby RSP back into the chassis. Then stop the booting process by pressing Ctrl C. From the boot option menu select iOS XR 64-bit internal network boot from RSP RP. After this, the standby RSP will boot up with the same software version that is running on the active RSP. Thank you for watching.